Continuing on with class three, I can't believe we were doing this many examples, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, we have more examples from Sengel. We have the volume and energy change during evaporation. Uh, I'm not sure we should be doing energy change. So I think because I can't do the energy change, we're not doing that portion of this example right here. Um, See, I'm not sure if this is worth it. But anyway, uh, so a mass of 200 grams of saturated liquid is completely vaporized uh, um, at a con constant pressure of 100 kilopascals. So that is actually um, something that is possible, but you have to add heat to this thing to be trying to keep it at the same uh, uh, at, at the same pressure, right? So you're putting it in this thing and you're adding heat and you're adding heat and you're adding heat and it changes phase and it's always at the same uh, uh, pressure right here. It would also, no, it wouldn't be the same temperature. Never mind, I'll take it back. So uh, we want to determine the volume change and we don't, we're not going to do the amount of energy yet because we haven't talked about that. So let's see, we want to go to our steam tables and our saturated steam tables and take a look at um, the properties. Let's see, boom, right here. And uh, that's going to be in B. And it's at the same pressure, right? So it's going to be easier for us to go to the uh, pressure based tables, which are the B21, B1.2, excuse me. And what did we say in here that they're 100 kPa? Well, that's really um, uh, pretty close to atmospheric, right there, right? So boom. So we have, uh, we'll write down, write down what these things are. And uh, um, ta -da. we have B.1.2 table. And at P is equal to 100 kPa. And we'll find, we should always write down what the saturation temperature is, because that's going to be. 99.62. No, I guess it is going to be the same temperature. Yeah, now that I think about it, it's got to be the same temperature, right? Yeah. And we can go VF. Um, it's going to be equal to 0 0.001043 kilograms per cubic meter. V. I don't, we don't need FG. We need VG this time right here, I think. Yeah. So that's 1.2. Six nine four zero, and I accidentally um, got one of the internal energy things right in there. Right there. So I think you read that. And I didn't write down what the units were. I put them by the thing. Okay, cool. Let's go back over here. So I, that was me writing all that stuff down. It was a very exciting video when I do that. If you want to determine the volume change uh, that's taking place, all right. Well, that's really just going to be. This delta V volume change is going to be um, uh, the mass, which was given to us as 200 grams. And we need to use kilograms, remember. And we'll just take the difference between uh, VG and VF. And I guess we could have taken that other number, right? We could, uh, we could just take that other number and put it right in there. So it's going to be 0.2, because it's now it's in kilograms, right? Because it was in grams of 200 grams. And just take what the difference is. Point one point six nine four zero. I left out a zero. Don't tell anybody. Zero zero one zero. Oh. Is that a nine or a four? That's a four. Couldn't look at my own. Couldn't read my own handwriting. And so the delta V that we're going to get. This is a boring example. It's going to be equal to a uh, point. Three three eight six. Uh, just cubic meters. I don't know. I got I used to write them per kilogram. Cubic meters. Not a great example. Not a great example. Um, let's see. Can I fit another example in there? Four and a half minutes into this. Sure. Why not? I'm getting tired. I haven't even uploaded these videos yet. All right, so um, the next example out of here is, okay, so at least it has some a little bit of uh, variation in there. We have a rigid tank is 10 kilograms of water at 90 degrees Celsius. If eight kilograms 
of the water is in the liquid form and the rest is in the vapor form. Determine the pressure in the tank and the volume of the tank. Interesting. There's a little bit. These little variations of the things can really trip us up. So I'm going to be get really good at this. Uh, get this stuff. Let's see. Um, let's think our way through here. We have 10 kilograms of uh, 90. All right. So that, uh, we, we know that we're somewhere in here. They've already kind of showed us we're underneath the dome. And so let's go and look up 90 degrees Celsius and see what we can get. We know we need the specific volume, so that's what we will do. I think we need the fluid and the, uh, the other one. Yeah, sure. Okay. So 90 degrees Celsius. It's going to be easier to go to the 1.1. And it looks like we might have already uh, uh, used that right here. So right in the B table, B1.1, we'll have um, at T, and these are all givens, right? The T, 90 degrees Celsius. Um, right, or the, write down what the PSAT is, 70.14, so that's the low, uh, uh, that's below atmospheric pressure. And um, VF is 0 0.001036 kilograms per cubic meter. VFG is equal to 2.36056 kilograms per cubic meter. So I think we have everything we need written down. And oh, okay. One of the things. All right. So, um, we have ten kilograms of water. Right. Um, eight kilograms of the water is in the liquid form. So what we need to do is find out what our x is going to be. We can do that, right? Because that's going to be. Remember, that's the m of vapor of the gas and the M of the total. So if that's the case, and we were told that it was in liquid form, the gas is going to be 10 minus the liquid. And of course, this is just going to be 10. So lo and behold, we are at 20% vapor. And so what we all we need to do to get the um, uh, uh, we'll see what happens we want to find the pressure. We already found the pressure. Boom, boom, boom. All right, we already did that. So find the pressure. There's the pressure right there. We've got it. We want to find the volume of the tank. So we kind of need to know the total volume. Right? Yeah, we need, the, we need the, the, the total specific volume to get that. So we take the fluid volume plus X times the difference between the fluid and the gas volume and we have all that information so we go 0 0.001036 plus 0.2 times we're going to cut this right here uh we don't need it i didn't do it in that bracket 2.36056 yeah bracket and parentheses Bra bracket it's like belt and suspenders um, this is going to get us uh, 0.4729, and these are cubic meters per kilogram, and they told us it was a, uh, a, a total of 10, right? So we take M times V, so we had 10 kilograms times this, 0.4729. We're going to have 4.729 cubic meters. Yay! So there's the answer. And we're under 10 minutes, which is what a good video should be. Um, I think I have one more example. And I think it takes a lot of paper. So I don't know if I even want to do it. I guess I will. Seems like a lot of effort.